Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Event Explorer. I'm your host, Daniel Roth, and today we are diving into one of the world's most vibrant and culturally significant celebrations, Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. This tradition, with roots in ancient Mesoamerican civilizations, honors the lives of loved ones who have passed. It's celebrated in cities across Mexico and the U.S., with major events in places like San Antonio, Tucson, Mexico City, and Oaxaca, each adding its own unique flavor to this deeply meaningful festival. At its core, Dia de los Muertos is about remembering and celebrating those who have come before us, with beautifully decorated ofrendas, marigolds, and the iconic calaveras, or skulls, all meant to guide and honor the spirits of the dead. Now, while many cities have long established Dia de los Muertos celebrations, Santa Fe's version is a newer addition, having officially launched in 2022. But in just a short time, it has grown rapidly thanks to the city's long history of community events and festivals, including the 300-year-old Fiestas de Santa Fe and the 100-year-old Zozobra Festival. Now, Santa Fe is no stranger to unique and meaningful celebrations, and its Dia de los Muertos quickly became an important event in the city's cultural calendar. In today's episode, I'll be speaking with Ray Sandoval, a key figure in Santa Fe's cultural landscape and the driving force behind the Zozobra Festival and Santa Fe's Dia de los Muertos. Ray's family's deep ties to Santa Fe go back centuries, and his work has brought new life to the city's most iconic events. We'll explore how the Dia de los Muertos celebration in Santa Fe came to be, why it's resonating so strongly with the community, and what makes it different from other celebrations in the U.S. and Mexico. Ray is going to share his vision for the event, explaining how Santa Fe's deep cultural history and its artistic spirit have helped make Dia de los Muertos a powerful and inclusive celebration. From the stunning ofrendas on the plaza to glow-in-the-dark parades and Aztec dancers, Santa Fe's version of Dia de los Muertos has its own unique flair while staying true to the heart of the tradition. Join us as we explore the journey of Santa Fe's Dia de los Muertos and discover why it's quickly becoming a must-see celebration. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to subscribe and share this episode, and let's continue exploring the world's most unforgettable events together. Let's get to it. All right, today we are joined by Ray Sandoval, a major force behind some of Santa Fe's most iconic cultural events. With deep family roots in the city dating back centuries, Ray has a special connection to Santa Fe's traditions and history. He's been at the helm of Zozobra since 2013, breathing new life into the 100-year-old celebration. And in 2022, he launched Santa Fe's very own Dia de los Muertos Festival. We'll be talking with him today about his journey as an event promoter, how these celebrations come together, and what's in store for this year's Dia de los Muertos on the plaza. Ray, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Yeah, yeah. It's a really beautiful story. You know, all the different events that you've got going on in Santa Fe. I'm familiar. I've been to Santa Fe a number of times in my life. I'm very moved by it and the the art and culture that's come out of it. Um, recently, I mean, you know, hitting the global stages with things like Meow Wolf, um, Santa Fe art scene, um, a lot of really modern art coming out. So it's just so, so cool. And, and, and you're really tied into all of that. So tell me about your history in Santa Fe and, and um, kind of growing up there and, and what was it like kind of culturally and how, how did that change you and, and make you the person you are today? You know, I just, I feel so fortunate, you know, Santa Fe for being such a small city. And I think, you know, when I was born, I think we were like 30, 40,000 people, right? Yet Santa Fe had some of the best art galleries, some of the best restaurants. You know, we would walk down to La Fonda and there'd be shops that would say London, Paris, New York, Santa Fe, you know? And so it's like the biggest, uh, it was, it was so crazy to live in such an amazing cosmopolitan city that was so small. Um, and I really do give a lot of credit to the art scene that was here because first of all, Santa Fe is a magical place. If your listeners haven't visited, please come visit us. The light, the architecture, the food, there is just, uh, the energy here is just amazing. And, you know, I traveled all over, lived in different places, um, and they're great, but there is something about the energy that is here. And so growing up here was, was almost living in kind of a bubble, to be quite honest with you. Mm. You know, it was very, as I said, cosmopolitan, but at the same time, it was small town, right? So you'd go to family reunion, then you'd meet um, another 10 cousins that you didn't know that you had. 
Um, you know, you had these festivals and these traditions that were throughout the city. You had these huge art um, cultures, Indian market, uh, you know, which is the oldest indigenous market, just turned 100 last year. Uh, you have Spanish market, which is a uh, type of, uh, you know, New Mexico, Spanish colonial art that was, you know, brought over uh, in the 1600s and still survives today. And so it was just an amazing place to grow up. And I'm very fortunate because my uh, my mother's family was actually in the expedition with Peralta to do mapping. He was a mapper. And so he, uh, he came uh, very, very early on in 1610. And uh, I guess we all fell in love with it because we're still here. That's so cool. What a deep connection uh, to the area and, and, and to this the um just what a unique way to grow up and, and to really be a you know part of a culture you know that we not everyone especially in, in the u.s you know has these deep roots um so tell me about kind of um you said you lived away and, the, and then came back to santa fe um how was how was your career trajectory kind of brought you to the point you're at today you know it's uh i i moved to dc i was always very much involved in politics uh, very interested in politics so i moved to dc Got an internship in the White House, uh, moved up to Boston to get my law degree, uh, came back to New Mexico to start practicing law. And then I really wanted to start my own law firm. And so I moved up to Seattle and I uh, start, started a very successful practice up there. Unfortunately, my father got ill and, you know, um, we had such huge bonds that moved back to kind of help take care of him. And fortunately, he got better. And um, I had just, you know, taken my law one my, my entire firm apart and so i really didn't want to do that and so i was, I was looking for other things to do and um and that really is when i decided i would get more involved in some of the events around town very cool and then so i imagine you know so zobra is 100 years old so so you you grew up seeing these events what were they some of the early some of these early memories of of going to events you know personally and how it touched you you know, well, first of all, it was just, it was amazing because like our plaza is the center of our town, right? Everybody goes to the plaza. The plaza is the meeting place. It is like a sacred place. Um, and it's just, it's, it's amazing to grow up in a place to where there's a sense of place and a sense of purpose in the middle of your town. And, you know, and, and we'll talk a little bit later about Dia and why I really felt it was important to be on the plaza, but you know, the plaza was the place to go. And so, you know, we, we were celebrating, you know, when I was a kid, we were celebrating 290 years of Fiesta de Santa Fe, the oldest continuous celebration in the United States. Um, and then Zodobra, who at that time, you know, just this year's has overturned 100 and he's the new kid on the block. So, you know, that tells you a lot about the city. But I will say that something about our culture is that there are there's a deep uh, respect for making promises and keeping those promises. And so, you know, there's a saying in Santa Fe, a promise made has to be a promise kept. And so it's one of the reasons why these events have such longevity is that there's a real uh, sacred bond between the events and the city. And so people really step up to take over those events and, you know, pass the torch, as it were. Speaking of torches, we, we just got past the Zozobra uh, event, the 100th anniversary. Congratulations. And, and you know, you've been at the helm of that for, for now 12 years. So, um, you know, that's a credit to you in um, your stewardship that it's it's kept going and even growing. There's a long history there and it's it's very cool. It's not something, you know, as I read about it, I was just shocked with with what a cool cultural iconic event just to be honest, I didn't know about. I knew a lot about Santa Fe. I knew a lot about, you know, different. We were talking about Burning Man as kind of has some some iconic, uh, some iconographic uh, uh, similarities, iconographic similarities. But I didn't know about Zozobra. And, and it really is a staple and it is something that's super unique, but but celebrated and sounds sounds awesome. Can you can you give a little bit of a background of Zozobra and then take us up to this year of, of kind of what you offered with the uh, the event? Absolutely. You know, Zozobra is uh, Santa Fe's boogeyman, right? And it was created by a, a gentleman named Will Schuster who moved to Santa Fe in the 1920s after being mustard gas in the, in the trenches of World War I in France. It went back to Philadelphia, was told that he could die in Philadelphia as a young man or he could come out to the West and die of rattlesnakes and whiskey. And so he chose rattlesnake to whiskey. So he gets here and he meets up with a John Sloan, who's kind of this Renaissance guy. And they, the art scene is really starting in Santa Fe. And so they're thinking about doing things and so forth. And, you know, they were, they were called Five Nuts in a Hut, the sequel Pentores. 
They were five gentlemen that lived together and would share their, uh, you know, when they would sell a painting, they would share it. So that way they could all survive a couple of months and then somebody else would sell a painting. And uh, one Christmas Eve, uh, Schuster sells a painting that he'd been working on, tell them all, you know, the heck with it, who cares what happened? It's Christmas Eve. There's this new hotel, La Fonda, that opened up in Santa Fe. Let's go out and I'm tired of having beans and rice. Let's have some steak and some tequila. And so they go to the restaurant and everyone's in a really bad mood. And Schuster, you know, he kind of upset at this. And so he always had this pad of paper where he would sketch down things that he saw that were interesting. And he takes it down and he conjoled them to write down what was bothering them. And he puts it in the middle of the table and he takes the candle and he lights it on fire and he declares that their gloom is gone. Well, of course, the bartender comes back, sees that there's a fire on the table and kicks them all out on their butts, right? So they're now out on the plaza and they're laughing about this. And so Schuster gets this idea that, you know, that the power of writing things down, you know, when we sign contracts, when we write, take the time to write something down, there's a power in that. And so he comes up with this concept that you can write down what's bothering you and symbolically burn it away. And so he's kind of looking for this vessel of how we can do this. And so he's taken down to a Good Friday celebration in Mexico and he sees an effigy of Judas that paraded through the town. People spit at it, they throw their shoes at it, and then they burn it. And so he decides, oh, this is the perfect thing. I, I need an effigy to capture all this gloom. But one of the things I think is really special about Zozobra is that Zozobra is not political, nor is it religious. Zozobra is created from the gloom that we as human beings put out, either when we put out gloom into the world with others or, or create gloom for ourselves. So all this negative energy manifests itself into this 50 foot boogeyman that wants to come in and destroy Santa Fe. And so there's this beautiful mythology that, okay, so is the Zobra now exists and he's gonna come and terrorize our city and take away all of our hope. You know, how do you get rid of that gloom? And what's so beautiful about the story is that Schuster says that just as we created the Zobra with all of our gloom, there's another part of human beings, which is when we're buried, when we're selfless, that creates another spirit and that's the fire spirit. And so the fire spirit is able to accumulate and materialize and then do battle with the Dobra. And so you have this good versus evil, you know, this um, this light versus dark battle between the two. And so every year, the citizens of Santa Fe have to show up in order to give that that positive energy to the fire spirit. So that way the fire spirit can do it the Dobra. So it's this secular, artistic, cultural um, manifestation that just kind of comes to life only in Santa Fe. It is so you as a kid, was this Oprah like something that you thought might be real? Kind of, you know, it was, yeah, absolutely. You know, it was funny because you know, uh, I said, you know, these Santa Fe's boogeyman, you know, your parents, when you misbehave, they wouldn't tell you that there was a monster in your back, they told you that Dobra was coming for you, right? And you had seen this thing, it was 50 feet tall and it moved, its eyes moved and it groaned and so forth, and so. You know, a lot of kids behave very, very quickly when their parents told them that the Dover was coming after them. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I'm going to use that one. I think with with my nine year old. Um, so, so that you know, this kind of artistic statement in this, uh, you know, obviously a big burning um, effigy is going to draw people in. The event's grown over the years. Um, kind of how how did that story develop to the point it is today, and and what did the event look like uh, in 2024? You know, so you're, you're absolutely right. It was one of the best kept secrets. You know, you said that as you go through, you just found out about the Zobra. There's a lot of people that don't know about the Zobra. And, you know, I do think that it's one of the best kept secrets. Um, the Zobra started off as a small community celebration. So Schuster started with the five foot the Zobra in his backyard in 1924. Um, it was so popular that people asked him to re repeat it in 1926. And, um, and then, or in 25, excuse me, and then in, by 26, they had 500 people in their backyard and they decided they couldn't do this anymore. They had to actually move it out to a public space. And so the Zobra has always been popular. And it's funny because I described the Zobra as the, the city of Santa Fe have a love affair with this monster, right? So, you know, we, we have a kid's contest poster where they draw the Zobra that, so we can sell it for, you know, little kid uh, posters. This year we got 600 entries. Um, and you know, I can't judge anymore because seeing the Zobra in crayon, I'm like, I like that one. I like that one. I'm like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Um, but it really has been a part of our culture where you see the Zobra everywhere. There are murals with the Zobra there, uh, you know, 
you go down to Baja Tacos and there's the Zobra, you know, in flip flops and a Hawaiian shirt grabbing some tacos yes. before he leaves. Um, he's part of our culture and part of our history. And it's really great to just see it come alive. And not only just when the Zobra, you know, gets there and, and he moans and groans as a 50 foot marionette, but the fact that we see him through all of these different phases through the city. And the original founder, I mean, it was 100 years ago. So he's no longer building Zazobra. Who who puts this, uh, who builds Zazobra now and, and, and how big has he gotten? Yeah, so Zazobra started out, as I said, five feet, um, quickly moved to 20 feet, then got to about 38 feet. He shrunk back down for two years during World War II and uh, supplies were pretty scarce, back down to five feet. And then he has grown to 50 feet, six inches uh, today. And in 1964, Schuster had a heart attack and started to look for who he was going to give uh, the Dobrit to. And Harold Gans was a member of the Kiwanis called the Santa Fe. This is a service organization like Alps or Rotary. Our mission is to help young kids. And so he went to Schuster and said, listen, we can do two things for you. We can burn a Will Schuster's Zobra in perpetuity, and we can, we can sell tickets and we can sell T-shirts. And the net proceeds that we make, we can give that back into our community in terms of scholarships and uh, and grants for nonprofits that would help kids. And so Schuster thought about it for a while, and he decided that that's what he wanted to do, is that he wanted to give back to the community. And so now you have this amazing event that is a cultural, historic icon, right? And so you're looking back and, and keeping up that promise from the past but you're educating and you're investing in our future generations. And so what a, it's an amazing event, both on both sides of the timeline. Really beautiful. Um, so now, now is there kind of the, the, the festival trappings that come with Zobra and, and it becomes kind of a full fledged um, entertainment, almost event or cultural entertainment event. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is a, we try to make it a world-class event, right? So there are premium viewing sections and there's risers and there's, you know, uh, there's uh, fired performers that are performed beforehand. There are local bands uh, who come out and perform. There is festival food. And so, you know, this year we had just under 80,000 people who attended the event. Um, and it was a record for us, this being the Zobra's 100th year. But yes, it is very much a festival event. You know, all the things, the trappings that go with that, logistics, you know, security, um, just all of those different things, party bodies, of course, right? Ten, sure. those kind of things that are just that that come through. And it, what's so funny is that we were going through some old uh, some old papers the other day, and we found a 1960 budget, and it was like two thousand dollars for the entire event. This was construction, fireworks, and you know, we just spent one point two million on this last event putting it together. So, you know, very very different time. Sure, fabulous. Congratulations. Thank um, you. So you took over in 2013. Uh, was the event like it is today in 2013 or ha have you grown? I know you had a vision for it. So, so you've grown it over these years. Um, how did you see that there, that there was kind of that potential there? Did, did you just kind of have faith and, and, and know there was a passion there? You know, I think that there is. So first of all, you know, one of the things that draws me to events is the fact that events remind us that there's more that that we share in common as human beings that divide us, right? And when we get off of our phones and we get off of Twitter and off of Facebook and we actually interact with one another, it really does a good thing for our society, right? So I'm always looking for those kind of events. And so Zazobra, I mean, first of all, from a primal, just human, watching a 50-foot effigy burn that you wrote down your glue or you put your divorce papers in or, you know, you put in something that was personal that you wanted to burn, that on its own level is just an amazing experience, right? But then you add in the fact that you're with, you know, 60,000 of your closest friends. So there's this dichotomy to the event, which is that you're in a huge crowd and you're all chanting, burn him, burn him, right? And that's something just really trial of that. There's fire, there's all these things that are going on. But then at the same time, you're having a uniquely individual experience because you yourself know what you are trying to get rid of or what you're trying to do to, 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 to lead in the past and kind of make something better. And so I always knew that Schuster hit the jackpot in terms of, you know, being able to really reach human beings on these two levels that, you know, we want to be social. And at the same time, we also want things that matter individually to us. And so um, putting these two together was a magic recipe. So when I took over in 2012, we had, we had moved this over from a Friday night to a Thursday because our we were part of the Fiesta de Santa Fe. And the police force could not be in different locations. 
the entire police force couldn't be in a location at the same time. And so it was decided that the Zobra would move to a Thursday. And what happened immediately was we lost our kid, right? It was a school night. People decided, hey, you know, can't do this uh, because it's a Thursday night. And so our crowds dwindled to about 20,000. And to me, um, losing our kids was just, you know, it's a death nail for any tradition. If you don't have kids, you don't excite them. There's not going to be anybody to carry on your tradition. So when I took over, I went back to the city and said, okay, I get that the police force can't be in three locations at once. So I'm going to ask to move back to Labor Day weekend, which is the week before the Santa Fe Fiesta. So that way we don't have that problem. And the other thing was not only would I be able to invite our kids back, but I'd be able to invite all of our expatriates because Labor Day weekend is on a federal holiday. So you have a four day weekend. So all of those people who left Santa Fe could now bring their kids back to experience this amazing cultural tradition. And I think that has been really an amazing part of this. Um, because the event itself was amazing. We just had to just get it to a point where we could really share it with the world. And now you're drawing in, you know, you're selling hotel rooms, restaurants are full all weekend, the, you know, art is being sold and, and people are being able to come home and, and show a culture that's maybe only been described to their kids, you know, if they move to, you know, wherever, California, New York. Um, so now, now they can, they can give that experience. So, so what a benefit culturally and economically to the city. Um, so some of the things that you've mentioned tie into Dia, Dia de los Muertos, the idea of writing something down and burning it, you know, as this, as this kind of uh, release of the, and, and the idea of this, this personal yet communal cathartic event, um, the symbology, you know, there, there's a lot and, Dia de los Muertos, I'm sure it's been celebrated in Santa Fe for, for a long time, but not kind of officially. And 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 you headed this up um, in 2022 and have now and it's now grown to, to really be accepted. And, and I've seen the videos and the pictures from it. I mean, it's, it's a gorgeous event and it's super well attended. It's in the right spot, you know, right in the plaza. Tell me um, where that inspiration come from. I know I can see a little bit. Zozobra will, will be that inspiration and we just want to have, you know, throw bigger and better events and parties and, and celebrations. When did the inspiration strike to to make this happen in Santa Fe? Well, you know, it kind of like Schuster fighting with Zozobra, you know, burning something and then finding a vehicle for it. It kind of happened in two stages. So the first was that, you know, when I took over Zozobra, one of the things that I learned was that our Mexican community on the south side of the city wasn't attending the Zobra, right? And so, and you know, this is an, a, a, this is, the Zobra is a, a celebration for everybody. So I went into those neighborhoods, I went into those businesses, and I really tried to get folks. And the Zobra is kind of a weird thing. So if you don't grow up with it, you know, you got, and, and uh, you know, it's it's great to look at videos and so forth, but you got to experience it to really understand what it's about. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of the kooky thing that Santa does. And I couldn't make that cultural connection. And the other thing that I found out was that our Mexican population did not feel comfortable coming downtown to our plaza. And as a lifelong Santa Fean, I, that just bothered me on every level because I want our plaza to be a place where everybody kind of feels welcome. And so, you know, so I, so I was thinking about what do I do? I, I got to figure out how to make that connection with Zobra. And then I remember going to go see Coco with my mom in theaters, right? And and I had heard about Day of the Dead um, and I never really, you know, had that much, you know, uh, experience with it. It's not something that my family celebrated. Um, and so all of a sudden, you know, it was like, wow. Because again, Zozobra is that event where you are looking introspectively at yourself to say, hey, what did I do to create gloom? You know, what am I doing to be a better person? But Dia de los Muertos is an opportunity for us to look back on the people that actually got us here. You know, we're standing on the shoulders of those people. And to take an opportunity to take a moment to remember those people who got you here, you know, that, you know, that great, 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 great grandfather that got on a ship from Spain who came to New Mexico to do maps, you know, those kind of things. It's just like that, that's an amazing part to be. And again, I just think that in our crazy TikTok, you know, 24 hour news cycle world, we don't have enough of these opportunities to either for self reflection, which is really what I love about the Zobra, but also about reflection about those who got you here, both on good and bad, right? You know, there were things that my ancestors did here that we're still struggling with. 
decade later. Um, and so you honor both the good and the bad, and you hope that you learn from the bad so that way you're not, you're not repeating them. So I see Coco and I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is it. You know, this is like, I can create the land of the dead on the Santa Fe Plaza. I can, you know, put black light all over the place and really make everything pop and glow in the dark and really do the kind of thing. And so, um, so I remember talking with our Kiwanis club and they're like, well, you know, it's a little close to the dough, right? Come on. And that's eight weeks. Like we got time to rest. Right. And so they're like, well, okay, maybe let, let, you know, let's go do this. And so we started reaching out to some of our Mexican groups. We reached out to the Mexican consulate. And, you know, one of the things that's really important about events, especially when you take on an event like Dia de los Muertos, is that you want to be very careful that you are not doing cultural appropriation or that you're not offending somebody, right? So, okay, I have this great idea. I want to do this, but I, I've never celebrated this. This isn't something that was part of my culture, so I don't want to get it wrong. And so by in, enlisting people that had been celebrating in Santa Fe for a very long time, and said, hey, I want to bring this to the plaza and to watch their eyes just light up because the plaza is like, that's it. That's the biggest stage in our city. Um, and so people really came out and it was amazing to see the outpouring um, from our communities, from our libraries, from our museums, from our city staff that just said yes, that they wanted this. And so it was something that just kind of came together. And, you know, one of the things that I like to do is you know, Santa Fe has known it the city different, right? Because we do it, we do things differently. And so part of what I wanted to do was to create an authentic Dia de los Muertos experience. But at the same time, I wanted it to have Santa Fe's old, old flavor, right? And so the glow in the dark, um, the glow in the dark was something that was really cool about this. And then the other thing was that I wanted people to be able to participate. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to happen. Because like, if you show up to the plaza, how can we put you know, that deceased loved one, um, how can they join the celebration? And so all of a sudden that, you know, I was like, I think Polaroid they're back. And so I went on Amazon and I found out that, you know, um, uh, you know, kids in, ja in Japan really started this craze. And so now you have these little tiny Polaroids that come out with a two by three. And then I'm like, okay, can I bring the two, you know, two by three inch frame? And so we were able to find those frames. And so one of the things that's really cool is that you can come to our event and we can actually take a Polaroid of a, of a photo that's on your phone of a loved one, print it out, put it into a little frame, and then you can put it on an ofrenda so that way you're, you can participate in, the, in our activities as well. And that's something that I think is really important. That's, yeah, so that, that is a big piece. What, uh, the ofrenda, the, the idea of... Um... I'll let you explain it a little bit. So you must have, I mean, what a cool journey that you've been on yourself. You know, it's it's a new world tradition, right? This is, Dia de los Muertos is, is maybe you, when you hear it and it's in Spanish, you think, oh yeah, it's it's from Spain. It's been going on thousands of years. No, this is this is a, a new world, an American, South American um, tradition, you know, even dating back to the Aztecs, right? Or they, they think, um what what did your research find and, and how did it kind of propel what you programmed the the event with? What, yeah, you what know, had it, to be what has to be at a Dia de los Muertos festival? You know, I definitely the ofrendas, right? And so the ofrendas are basically altars. Um, and normally they're like three child altars with with um and what you do is that you decorate those altars with pictures of loved ones, right? And it's important to do that because um, having that picture of a loved one, their memory stays fresh and they're able to then leave the land of the dead and for this one day come and visit with you. And so you put on, you know, a picture of your grandfather and then, you know, people have packs of cigarettes that the, that, that person used to smoke or a bottle of tequila, right? Their favorite bottle of tequila or, you know, for, for my grandfather, he loved sunflower seeds. He's the one who got me addicted to sunflower seeds. And so, you know, there are sunflower seeds that are on the ofrenda next to him. And it's just a really personal way to remember that person and remember their life and the things that they liked and, and those kind of things. And so those are that is the most important thing is to have those ofrendas. And what I found was that there were um, to the add to what you're speaking to is that this is a new world, right? So this is something that the Aztecs were celebrating. And then when the Spanish brought over Catholicism and tried to force Catholicism on some of our native people there was a mixture of kind of Catholicism with what had been practiced before. And it turned out into this a beautiful celebration. And so one of the things that we did is that 
we were looking for um, Aztec dancers. And we have a group of Aztec dancers in our city, of course, of course, in Santa Fe, right? And it just, it, it amazes me because we're, we're such a small town, but like the things that you find. And so, you know, called them up and Patricia was like, absolutely, what you're doing? What you're doing it? Where? Yes, we want to do this. And so, you know, they get, they get dressed in the regalia and the sacred robes that they have and they get incense. And so one of the things that leads off our glow in the dark parade on Saturday night is that we have the blessing from our Aztec dancers um, with incense and smudge and they go to each of the ofrendas and they bless it. Um, and it's just beautiful and it's, it's, it's meaningful and it's just really something that just, you know, it tugs at your heartstrings because it is important to remember those who came before you. Um, the marigold, um, you know, the yellow flower that is, or, or orange, I should say, that is everywhere. And, the, and, it, and it's the sense that is supposed to bring the, the, the dead, uh, you know, to the place where you're asking them to come. And so all the ofrendas are, are, are decorated with this, uh, this fragrance that you have um, from the marigold. And so, you know, we have a gentleman who owns a hotel in Santa Fe and went down to the nursery and in July started them to start growing them so that they would be ready in time. And so, you know, that morning, that Saturday morning, we have a thousand marigolds that are real and delivered to us on our plaza. And so just the beautiful orange mixed with the falling reed. Um, and then the, the paper papales, you know, we've all seen, kind of seen these. These are pieces of paper that have cutouts in them. And, you know, they have different symbols in them. They have skulls in them. They have, you know, guitars. They have just different things. And to really, uh, to decorate our plaza um, as if it's completely the land of the dead, you know, and, and I love our plaza and I've attended many, many events, but I really wanted to go over the top. And so the, the decorations, the colors, um, you know, we have all of these really cool inflatable, you know, Halloween became this big celebration. And so, you know, you, you don't just have Santa Claus anymore. Now you have jack-o'-lanterns and stuff. Well, that is now moved over to Dia de los Muertos. And so you'll have, you know, the, we have huge, you know, Dia de los Muertos mariachis that are holding a guitar. We have little, you know, uh, we have dogs and cats that are just bones with the faces on them. And it gives the kids an opportunity to go and take pictures and to touch it and to look at it. And, um, and then we also started face painting. This was something that was really important to us. And so we have nine face painters that I feel so bad for them. They work from about two o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock. It's all free and they don't have a second break. You know, there's the lines are just long and to see the kids getting their faces painted and to ask questions of their parents. Well, what are we doing? And then, you know, why is grandpa, you know, why is there a picture of grandpa on our plaza? And then to, to watch the parents explain and to see the pride well up, you know, in a kid that their, that their, their relative is being honored in this way on the Santa Fe Plaza. It's just something that's so special and it really is endearing. That is so touching. And yeah, the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up on, uh, and the idea of kind of just how many special moments this is creating and the idea that you're drawing from a cult, an existing culture that, that didn't feel like they have kind of ownership over the main space. And now you're bringing, you know, the, the South side up or this, you know, this Latino population up into the main plaza. Has that had an influence on you know, Santa Fe is so well known for the visual art scene. Has, has your event had an influence on, and, and are you seeing kind of more of that um, work its way into how Santa Fe defines itself? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I have to tell you that they, now the first year we had a mariachi group from uh, uh, Capitol High, which is on the South side. And many, many of the members are, um, you know, second generation Mexicans who had moved in with their, their parents. And I remember that they performed on the plaza and, you know, they're leaving and there's uh, this young man about 16 years old and then he was bawling, like he was just crying. And I, I didn't know if somebody had said something rude to him. I didn't know if he, had, you know, I, you know, he tripped over a nail or whatever, What's you know, you just on? don't know. Right. And so, you know, the event organizer, you don't, you, you so I ran over to him right away, and I, you know, and I said, you know, what happened? Are you okay? And he looked at me and he told me that he never thought he would perform on the plaza bandstand and it was just such an honor that he was filled with this emotion to have wow. his family there and his friends there seeing him perform on the plaza um and it was just so special to him you know and you know and, and i've had other folks that say no you know you need to move this to the south side because it'll be easier for folks to get there and i'm like 
this isn't about making it easier for folks to get this. If that is it, then we'll work with our transit folks to help get buses in. But this is about creating a space where people feel comfortable and they feel honored about their and share their own culture, right? And that way we should all learn from that and learn that, you know, there's there are these intrinsic things to being human and understanding our mortality is not a bad thing, right? To remember that we're only here for a short amount of time and to remember those who came before us um, and the good and the bad that they did. So that way we learn from their life experience as well, I think is really, really important. So, you know, I've had a lot of people say, oh my God, this is so amazing. Let's move this to the South side. And I, I resisted that because I really do think that the plaza is the heart of Santa Fe and any big celebration belongs in the city of our, you know, the center of our city. Amazing. And, and, and you are owning it and bringing it, you know, bringing so much to it. Um, from someone who's not from Santa Fe, how would how can they approach the event? You know, how how should they they feel kind of coming and prepare themselves um, to experience this in, in 2024, 2025, if they make it next year? Well, you know, one of the things that I really love about Santa Fe is that, you know, the second that you get here within five minutes, you're going to feel like, you know, your family, right? People just take you under their wings. They'll tell you what to do. They'll they'll do stuff. So the first thing is, you know, come and experience this and enjoy it. It's going to be something that you're really going to love. Come prepared with, if you have photos, you know, we have frames. So that way you can honor your uh, loved ones and honor Brenda. Or if you don't, like I said, we'll take the, the photograph from that. Get your space painted. You know, um, somebody will come up to you, ask you to dance. You really need to, you know, to dance and participate. Uh, you know, after after the, um, the blessings from the altars by our Aztec dancers, we then do a glow-in-the-dark parade with Chandel and Moligangas. Um, and... You know, grab a, your family here, grab, you know, participate. You don't have to just be an observer. If you want to just observe, that's fantastic. But, you know, go, we'll hand you a candle, we'll hand you glow in the dark stuff. Walk with us, you know, remember your loved one. We have a digital ofrenda where if you, um, you know, we can actually take the, the photo off of your phone and put it into our slideshow. We have these huge screens that we can actually portray that on. Right. So, you know, come in and participate to the extent that you want to participate. Everyone's going to welcome you and please don't feel like, you don't, know, you know, none of us know what we're doing. So um, it's OK. You know, we'll 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 figure it out kind of together. And I think that that's just it is about creating community and making sure that folks are welcome and making sure that people, um, you know, and what's really great about this, too, is that, you know, our our Mexican community, they help people to understand and never in a way of, oh, you're doing this wrong or you shouldn't do that. It's, uh, let me explain to you a little bit about this, right? And it, it's a very warm kind of welcome uh, to the city and to the festival. So, you know, please come. It's all free. Um, so come and enjoy yourself. October, a little chilly sometimes in, in late October this year. We'll actually be on Dia de los Muertos. Uh, so it's Friday, November 1st and, no and Saturday, November 2nd. So bring a little bit of a pullover. You might want to be able to... to you know, as that sun goes down, it does get cold in early November in San Francisco. Sure, sure. Well, it sounds amazing and 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 a little chilly, but um, you know, candles to warm, and and you've got you know, thousands of your your closest new friends and family that are going to be there with you. Um, so and it's really really touching that um, you know, as we discussed, this is an organic tradition. Um, you know, for for people in in the New World and in, in North and South America and. Uh, without people carrying it on, it won't keep going. And there's obviously, you know, from, from yes, the popularity of Coco, but as well, you know, I, I think there's so many uh, visual um, touchstones there that, that people really do connect to it and know. And I think the, the more you touch base with it and the more you connect with it, the more it gives back to you and, and, and you can just, you know, have so much more meaning in your life. So, that everyone can be a part of it is amazing and that that you and your team are making it bigger, you know, every year, getting everyone involved, celebrating cultures that haven't been celebrated. I mean, congratulations. Thank um, you. I, now I'm, I, I want to come. So I, I will make Me plans. Too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah. and I know it's, I know it'll be uniquely special in Santa Fe and uniquely beautiful and, um, and meaningful. Um, in that, in your particular location. So, so congratulations. I wish you all the luck on the festival this year. And then um, we'll be chatting again, hopefully as, as, uh, as you continue to grow and, and um, have more events in your town. So thank you so much for joining today. 
No, Daniel, thank you. And thank you for doing this. You know, I do think that we live in such a special country, right? There's just all these different little things that have grown up. And you go to New Orleans and the French influence, you know, you go into the Midwest and you have different cultures. You know, we need to celebrate those cultures and to yes. have podcasts that put this in front of folks and let them learn about it, let them travel and explore this for themselves. You do a great service for us. So I'm just very pleased to be on it. And very grateful. So thank you for uh, for shining a light on our Dia de los Muertos celebration. Awesome. Well, I'm sure everybody will get a kick out of it, and I'll share tons of photos and video. You know, um, I'll get those off from you after this, and, and just to get people enticed, because as soon as you see it, you kind of want to go see it for yourself. So. All right. Well, take care. Thank you for joining. Have a great night. Thank you, Dan. Well, that was an incredible journey through Santa Fe's Dia de los Muertos celebration. In just a few short years, this event has grown into a vibrant and meaningful part of Santa Fe's cultural fabric, combining the city's rich history of festivals with the deeply personal and communal traditions of honoring the dead. From the colorful ofrendas on the plaza to the -the glow-in-the-dark parades and the inclusion of Santa Fe's diverse community, Ray Sandoval and his team have created something truly special. As we've seen today, Santa Fe may be a newer player in the world of Dia de los Muertos celebrations, but its deep-rooted festival traditions, spanning more than 300 years, have helped this event thrive and grow rapidly. Now, if you haven't experienced a Dia de los Muertos for yourself, seek one out near you, or travel to Santa Fe and become part of their amazing cultural heritage. So thank you for exploring with me on this episode of Event Explorer. Don't forget to subscribe and share this episode with your friends so we can continue to uncover and celebrate the world's most incredible events together. Until next time, keep seeking out your own new cultural traditions and happy exploring.